to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Tonight, we have a lot to do tonight. You are everything to me and i exalt your holy name i exalt your holy name John chapter 9. I welcome everyone to our April miracle service. There's so many people standing all around. I want you to know that at the end of this meeting, it will be worth it. Hallelujah. It will be worth it. The Bible says he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. John chapter 9. We especially thank those who have come from far. May the Lord honor you and may He visit you mightily in the name of Jesus. John 9. I just want to share something very briefly. There is such a heavy anointing in this place, such a mighty, heavy anointing of the holy spirit 9 verse 1 john 9 verse 1 and as jesus passed by he saw a man who was blind from his birth verse 2 and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind verse 3 jesus answered neither had this man seen nor his parents but that the works of god should be made manifest in him verse 4 i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for night cometh when no man can walk for as long as i am in the world I am the light of the world hallelujah we are going to examine three things i believe that these are the things that the lord is going to be dealing with tonight hallelujah something interesting happened in john chapter 9 he says and as jesus passed by so he, he did not intend staying there he passed by and then they saw a man Usually they would sit on the floor begging for arms. And they saw a man. The Bible says he was born blind. Born blind. And the disciples shared with us a powerful principle. Remember they had been with Jesus. And so Jesus had been teaching them the mysteries of the operation of the kingdom. So they were speaking on the strength of what he had taught them so far. Jesus had been teaching them about different dimensions of the kingdom. And and the way the laws of the spirit and the laws of the kingdom function hallelujah and the bible says while they were passing they saw an occasion they saw something that would be an opportunity to find out something that had been brewing in their heart and they said jesus by the way let's clarify something here is a very good case this is a man that was born blind so in light of what you have taught us who sinned are you getting it now so that means they had a revelation 
that there are certain predicaments that can come upon a man as a result of his personal violation of the principles of god that's the first dimension are you getting it now they said jesus here is a man who is sick on the strength of what you have taught us it is either the man sin or his parents sin are you getting this now that means jesus had taught them all right that there are dimensions of evil and and um misdeeds that can come upon man as a result of his personal violation of kingdom principles if you're following me say amen, amen. hallelujah that's the first category we are going to deal with tonight and then the second category he said the man or what his how did they know that the sins of parents can be responsible for a man being born blind i need you to understand the construction of their question many times we read these things blindly they were asking a very serious question out of revelation they said all right lord from what you have taught us if we can infer it has to be this man's sin because jesus had not taught them this new dimension he was about to teach them so he had taught them that every time you saw sickness and misfortune and all kinds of things is the sin of the man sin there meaning his violation of the set principles of the kingdom or the sin of his parents here it comes that means even jesus and the disciples recognize the role of ancestry and inheritance to causing jeopardy in the lives of people are you getting what i'm saying that means they were saying there was a possibility that the parents of this man would have seen and engaged in certain things that although he was born innocent are you getting what i'm saying and then the third category jesus let them know that not only are these two things possible there is a possibility that certain predicaments can come upon people not as a result of their personal violation of the kingdom not as a result of ancestry or inheritance are you getting me that certain things under certain conditions can be orchestrated in the lives of people so that the glory of god can be revealed every one of us in this place tonight falls under one or more of these categories are you getting my point there are some of us the reason why we desperately need a miracle this night is because we have sinned and violated the laws when i talk of sin i'm not just talking of the things we know to be seen lack of righteousness lack of walking in accordance to the principles of the kingdom there are many of us who are here and it may not necessarily be that we violated the kingdom of god the principles of the kingdom but that we are walking in the pain of certain things that have been done before we came let me tell you something very very straight brothers and sisters i always say this i know that many people have thought that there is nothing called a cause look up please i need your attention now we're building that there is nothing called generational curses they are not there's nothing called yokes listen let me tell you the truth if you believe that there are blessings it is very foolish not to believe that there are causes if there were no causes there's no need for blessings are you getting what i'm saying i don't mean to insult all the theologies that we have heard and i'm not saying they are wrong but i'm telling you that many we have done that teaching the full gospel you can get the teaching but when there is inaccurate and incomplete teaching of the truth it leads people into a lot of error are you getting what i'm saying now listen there are certain things in the kingdom that cannot be stopped what happens is that you can operate certain kingdom principles that can exempt you from their effect are you getting what i'm saying so it exempts you but it does not mean it cancels the operation of that law please follow what i'm sharing if you get this revelation you will walk out free tonight 
Hallelujah. If by reason of certain demonic activities, there is a cause over a family, watch this. And you come to the light of the understanding of redemption, what Christ has done for you. And you operate those principles. Listen, it's not going to just stop that thing from working for everybody. It will exempt you and you are out. And as many people who are interested in doing what you have done. Are you getting my point? That's the reason why people will still keep dying. Are you getting what I'm saying? As a result of certain things. Who seen that this man was born blind? Was it him? How could he have seen when he was not born at that time? Are you getting my point now? So Jesus said, no, this is not him because this thing was, he was born. It was a predicament. He found himself with that predicament. Who seen that you were born with your genotype SS? Who seen that you found out that there was a family terminal disease? You were just born with it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Who seen that you were born with a blood condition? Who seen that you, you just found out that you were in a family that was involved in witchcraft and idol worship. You didn't have a choice. You were born in it. Are you getting my point? And although you did not contribute anything actively, you cannot deny the effect that this thing is causing in your life today. We are going to deal with certain issues tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When the thief, the two thieves hung on the cross and Jesus was at their center, one of them looked and said, we have been punished for what we did. In other words, he acknowledged, we stole, they caught us, we are on that cross. So all we can ask for is the mercy of God. And he said, remember me. Hallelujah. So we, we see that the law of cause and effect still exists in the realm of the spirit he said do not be deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows that shall he we only use it for money is a spiritual law is a spiritual law that means everyone in the kingdom is a farmer you are always sowing you are sowing seeds and the bible says according to the justice system of god whatever it is that you sow you will reap hallelujah there are a number of us that what we are seeing in our lives today are the fruits of our personal violation of the principles of god it may be as a result of ignorance it may be things that happened before you were born again born again or you may even be here and you're, you've not given your heart to the lord that has granted satan listen let me tell you something the way satan walks huh? please understand this I, I i i shared a little last week you can get the teaching the speaking blood hallelujah our communion service was a powerful time and i did share that the first revelation of the blood is not mercy is the justice of god the mercy of god comes because of the justice system of god hallelujah please let me have two people two guys Two gentlemen, please just come quickly. Any two people now. Come, one here, one here. Watch this. Hallelujah. Now, if this is my handkerchief, please everybody look. I want to teach you something powerful. If this is my handkerchief, all right? And brother, you are trying to take it knowing that it's not your own. Is that true? If you are trying to take it and I suddenly realize... You will shift your hand very quickly because you are doing it illegally is that true now but assuming that you come and you now lie to this guy that this handkerchief belongs to you and he pays you for it are you getting the difference now he pays you for this handkerchief and he wants to come and take it and i come in and say this is my handkerchief do you think he will just go back like that are you getting my point i want you to understand satan's system of operation in mankind satan operates on a legal ground are you getting what i'm saying 
when you understand satan's system of operation you will now see the need for the blood you will now see the need for the name of jesus and you will appreciate the benefits of redemption are you getting my point satan did not come to steal dominion from man he was willfully given look at what he told jesus christ remember in the temptation one of the temptations what did he tell jesus he said all these kingdoms i will give to you if you bow because it was given to me who gave him adam 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 willingly gave man a uh, satan dominion that was why jesus had to collect it legally did jesus look at satan and say i am the christ give me back the keys it would have been a violation of the principles of the kingdom are you getting what i'm saying so every time we walk in sin and iniquity what we are doing is that we are giving satan license are you getting what i'm saying it's an authorization we're giving him authority and so he can stand and say on legal basis bless you thank you for instance let me use one example something that concerns all of us the issues of finance forget about kingdom prosperity when you are not faithful in tithing are you getting what i'm saying now are you seeing that some of us are where we are financially not because the government hates us not because we were born from poor families necessarily are you getting what i'm saying now some of us have consistently violated the set principles you see the principles of the kingdom are not invented you just discover them and walk in it you don't invent a new kingdom principle no it's been there the bible says ask for the ancient part it didn't say create one ask for it it's already there ask for it walk daring and you will find rest for your soul hallelujah again and again we find ourselves violating the principles of the kingdom But I want you to know that whether the predicament is caused by your personal violation of the kingdom, there is still a technology in the spirit that can take you out in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then the issue of the effects of what parents and ancestry and so on and so forth has done. Oh, it's so important you must understand that these things work our fathers covenanted africa to satan our geographical regions came into fraternity with the kingdom of darkness hallelujah i've had the opportunity to travel around many places and when i enter a city for a meeting if i'm staying there a few days one of the things i want to learn is the culture of the people hallelujah and in a few places that we've had opportunity to i have seen the reason why certain geographical regions are held back that's why you see certain traits come on to certain things and people keep saying it doesn't work just believe there is nothing you are seeing that people are not getting married it's obvious they say don't worry just claim it that nothing is happening faith is not foolishness faith works on proper kingdom understanding not just some shadow guesswork no are you getting what i'm saying now a lot of preachers have said anything you don't understand just take it by faith no faith does not mean haphazard you can know the build up of the factors that are put together that makes you believe that that thing will work that's why the bible says in all you're getting get understanding hallelujah so many of us today are victims you found out that your mother used to be epileptic you were now born love god all your life you were born again maybe from a young age and preachers told you everything is all right but you are seeing the same traits in your parents happening in your life hallelujah everyone that got married in your family the man or the woman died you are seeing the traces and people just tell you don't worry everything is okay just jump and shout around and say it's fine see there are a lot of people carrying lots of disappointment and pain in church 
from the result of wrong teachings that women of God have given people. It's just that they don't have the courage to confront us and call us wicked people. But there are many misguided teachings that we have brought the body of Christ into that is causing them to die. And you see, because of the man of God is always the one receiving the honorarium. Is that true? He's always the one receiving the blessings. He's always the one. He's shielded somewhat from the effect of all of these things. Even if he falls sick as a result of his own ignorance, he has money to remedy his predicament fast. So nobody will know. Who is deceiving who? Are you following me tonight? The Bible shows us clearly that a possibility exists for people to be benefactors of either the right doing or the wrong doings of those who have gone ahead of them hallelujah number three which may be the situation of some of us here jesus introduced something new to them hmm. verse three jesus answered neither that means there is still a possibility that you may have remedied the issue of all kinds of evil that comes through family lineage it's possible that you may have come into a point where you are born again and genuinely walking in the way of the lord but then you will notice that certain evils may seem to happen unrestrained and you may be tempted to ask the question lord what did i do wrong are you getting the point now because as far as i'm concerned any cause and any yoke over my life has been broken i know i'm free based on the truth of god's word i now have the revelation of the blood i'm born again i know what christ has done and i have applied it in my life so i don't expect that there will be any family curse walking in my life again and i know that i'm walking by the principles of god and where i fall short of his standard i understand the principles of repentance and i know how to approach the throne of mercy but jesus said there are certain things that can happen in your life and this is not for everybody are you getting my point he said there are certain things that are orchestrations and the bible says so that at a certain time the glory of god may be revealed in your life i know that this contradicts many messages that many of us have had but this is the bible are you getting my point a man called job for instance the bible tells us that this was a man who feared god and eschewed evil it was god's own testimony not a man god who dwells in light where there is no shadow of darkness gave a testimony about a man satan himself came and said as a result of this man's faithfulness there was a hedge belt around him and i satan could not even penetrate him and he said lord does job serve you for nothing he said take away what he has and watch the way he will curse you to your face i hope you know that those in the earth realm did not know there was a drama happening in the heavenlies are you getting my point that was why when job's predicament came three men came together with elihu and from their human logical point what did they say they kept quiet for seven days seven days they could not talk to job later they opened their mouth and said job what sin did you do that bring this kind of catastrophe and job said be careful lest you bring a curse upon yourself he said though he slay me yet will i praise him i know my heart is clean i know my slate is clean oh lord i served you but i saw my father die i prayed and prayed and prayed we fasted we even had revelations that he was going to leave but he died are you seeing that now and he was a man who feared god oh my mother oh my brother oh lord i wrote jam in integrity and i read i did everything but the result came out and i may have to repeat one whole year again oh god i would have cheated in that exam hall 
but I stayed and because of it now I have an extra year he said for such kind of people there is a technology in the spirit that is able to work these things out and build a dimension of glory I'm preaching to someone tonight hallelujah we are very quick to be judgmental over people you suddenly see sickness ravaging a family and you are seeing that they love God the woman is the sanctuary keeper cleaning everywhere yet her children are dying and people just look and say oh God oh dear that means that there is a hidden sin in this woman's life but the Bible says at the end of Job's life when God made a boast with him God gave him twice everything his daughters were the fairest in the city the wife of Job looked at him and said do you still hold your integrity in other words whether you hold your integrity or not as far as we are concerned the situation so just cause God justify what people are saying so that it will be that it's your sin that killed you and Job said why do you talk like one of these foolish women I said though he slay me yet will I praise him what did I do wrong oh God that until now I am not married what did I do wrong that in our family there's no marriage what did I do wrong that everybody is poor and broke in our family we get money and nothing happens as far as we are concerned we are Christians even if there is a cause or something I've, I've gone for deliverance so what is wrong I bring a word for someone tonight God is about to birth a dimension of glory in your life that you listen when God is done with you you will appreciate it you will begin to thank god and say lord it was good when i passed through this valley of the shadow of death i did not know that it was you making a boast of me in the realm of the spirit and though others have compromised and married he says john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance let me prophesy to you that though weeping endures for a night my bible tells me that joy comes with the morning he says he that weepeth bearing precious seeds shall doubtless return rejoicing there are many people today who are going through certain things because they are christians not because they are unbelievers we have been trained to criticize and persecute people because we have been taught by myopic preachers whose god is their belly and based on the things they see reading just at first sight they just believe When Jesus hung on the cross, the people who had heard his message stood by that cross and they said, what is all this? This man healed the sick. This man did this. I, I mean, we saw him walk away from the crowd. We saw him do a lot of things. Could he be so weak that he's helpless on that cross that men can mock him? Why didn't he demonstrate that he is the king of kings and lord of lords? But for the glory. Jesus was prophetically speaking about himself in that third instance. But I have come under the anointing to announce to somebody. That when the anointing of the spirit shows up. Part of the things that it does to you. Is, it says to appoint unto them in Zion. You know what that means? To set a date for your freedom. It says to appoint. To appoint. Isaiah 61. It says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. To bind up the broken hearted. To set the captives free. It says to appoint unto those who mourn. You know what it means to appoint? If I appoint you. And I say you are a gatekeeper. What happens? You assume duty. So to appoint means prophetically. To look at the people and through the access of the prophetic. To say we call your time of deliverance today. It says to appoint unto them that more. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed. When the spirit takes over your soul oh, yeah. that's what will happen to somebody tonight when the spirit takes over your soul 
when the spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul tonight god will take away that garment of shame he will take it away he will remove it and give you a new garment that when you step out everyone will know that you met the lord i want you to believe i'm not just motivating you his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul i'm prophesying to you you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul you will be changed your glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul and for medical reports that need to be changed tonight it will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over i don't care what the doctors have said i bring you a higher word you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul that garment of reproach over your life it will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit take over your soul and his mother called him jabez she said because i bore him in sorrow jabez did not name himself he was a victim of his mother's prophecy his mother's pain made her to call him jabez jabez a name that brought sorrow and jabez grew up everywhere he went he saw sorrow what did this man do who sinned was it him or his parents jabez mother cursed him he said you caused me sorrow as a result you will live in sorrow but a day came jabez said no come on god there must be a way of negotiating this he said oh that thou wouldest bless me remedy this curse over my life Oh, that thou wouldest bless me i can't live like this lord you are a just god you must give me an option to demonstrate whether i want to practice witchcraft or not i cannot be suffering because my father was a king i can't be suffering because we worship idols i was not there come on now the children shall not suffer the iniquity of their parents i was not there when they went to the river to make sure my mother gets a child lord we must negotiate this night there is a way i'm going to hold on to you there must be a justice system that will get me out of this mess tonight you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul listen hear me friends if you can hold on to the hand of god tonight you will leave this place with something but if you come here casually he will keep clapping for people who came here desperately there are people who have been fasting for this meeting for days and they said lord i'm holding on to you jabez mother called him jabez and jabez said oh god thou would you not bless me enlarge my coast and the bible said god answered him hallelujah the thief on the cross after realizing that what was happening to him was a due recompense for his wickedness he said remember me in your kingdom oh lord i do not come trying to justify myself lord i know i slept around that's why i have the terminal disease right now i'm not trying to claim right but i understand that there is a principle in the spirit 
that grants us access to come before the throne of grace lord i know i used to drink and smoke that's why i have liver condition i know that what is happening to me was not any wickedness of ancestry it's as a result of my carelessness i know i've not been tithing i know i've not been i've not been giving i've been sleeping with other people's husbands or carrying other people's wives and children around and i know that i gave satan legal access but tonight oh god i'm negotiating with you i what do you think going to the throne of grace is it's not just to go and stand there you go and talk and say lord it is written it is written although it is true that the soul that sins die it is written also that is not your desire that any wicked perish it is written you take the word of god the legal system of heaven it said produce your cause bring forth your strong reasons convince me what is the legal basis for your freedom from this witchcraft convince me i saw a pattern that happened from my maternal side in my family it looked like every firstborn male there were certain things that happened to them when i saw it i said no way somebody shout no way this night come on now you need to get angry and say no way i have seen it coming so you will stop it say nobody passes 25 years my own father my blood father his elder brother is late younger brother is late i found out that when they got to a certain age range no matter how high they were they must drop down and die my father has served god all his life but it did not change and then my father was sick almost at the point of death thank god for revelation Hiya. arise shine my light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon me we will arise arise shine our light is come The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Hallelujah. And I got angry. I said, Lord, if there is nobody to speak in my family, I can't speak. What is happening? My younger sister collapsed while she was writing examination. My elder sister for years would not get admission. Things were just upside down in my family someone needs to prophesy tonight say order hold on you know how they shout order in court when there's confusion somebody must speak and say order come on now i prophesy let there be order listen if there is nobody to speak in your family the altars that speak will keep speaking until somebody comes with an apostolic spirit and says i provoke another voice i come with the rod of a higher priesthood i come with the rod of a higher priesthood hallelujah please sit down for a moment we well, soon when you stand up i sense the anointing of the spirit strong let me teach you something about priesthood please look up the bible began to tell us in the book of hebrews hallelujah when it comes to walking in the justice system of god you don't do it as a king you go back as a priest are you getting the revelation that was why when the bible was about to explain to us the legal system of the blood and redemption kings were not mentioned again he started mentioning priests you now see why it is the priest in the village not the king that does all the connection with the gods so the bible says that there are different kinds of priesthood and every priest in ancient time had a rod are you getting my point that rod was not a symbol of authority it was a token that connected them with the gods are you getting what i'm saying so there were different kinds of levitical priesthoods and the rest who offered sacrifices and they tried to know the mind of god but the bible tells us that this very priest this high priest
priest they said he came after the order of a strange man called melchizedek you know who melchizedek was melchizedek was a was the king of salem the ancient city jerusalem the bible says having neither father or mother question neither father or mother that means could not be affected by any ancestry are you getting my point melchizedek a man who came that was the similitude of the christ that was why it was melchizedek standing in that priesthood that blessed abraham he said abraham you don't know who is blessing you but you come blessed be abraham possessor of he says son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth what gave how can a man bless a fellow man like that the bible says based on the principle of adumbration that means the four acting of something that will actually act melchizedek was a prophetic manifestation of the christ just like elijah are you getting my point now elijah came manifesting as the spirit of the prophetic moses came as the law so melchizedek showed up and he said abraham you come from a land of witchcraft called awe of the chaldeans they were wizards in that place are you getting my point abraham was not born a christian abraham was born an idol worshiper and when he met this priest called Mes melchizedek he said let me do something to you abraham come i'm about to change certain things look at me you are not going to get anything from my ancestry without father or mother yet i'm a king and still i am a priest he said melchizedek from today possess the heavens i mean abraham possess the heavens and the earth we talk so much about abraham but the man that spoke and changed his situation melchizedek right now we have come as those sons and daughters of abraham are you getting my point and the bible tells us that the priest that will speak to us that priest comes in the order of melchizedek so when the habalists lift up their rod like the egyptians suddenly a priest steps in with the rod of a higher priesthood and he says all right you can say what you want to say but we change it because there is respect in the spirit the military system is an organized system because it was borrowed from the way angels walk in the spirit never at any point with a man with an inferior rank talk or walk against the man it's not about size it's not about age it's about ranking so when this priest comes after the order of melchizedek he lifts up that rod and he opens up the door for you he says walk out of all this and that high priest christ himself who became both the lamb and became the high priest is here for you tonight listen listen it doesn't matter which of these three categories there are many people who will be saying lord i know i just came here to find out whether there can be mercy for me i want you to know there is abundance of it that voice that speaks against you there is another blood that speaks and for many of us who are coming it's not your fault but you were born from that state tonight a rod of a higher priesthood will be lifted for you i have waited for this moment to come To the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back. I won't go back. Can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. So tonight. I want you to believe jesus told us something he said as my father has sent me 
Mambrando Satabala Kataya. With the same assignment and the same equipping. Let's look at that scripture. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Zembros Come on, just pray in tongues for one minute. Something just entered my spirit. As my father has sent me with the same equipping, with the same equipping. John 20. John 20. John 20. Ah! Goodness. John 20. Are you there? Then said Jesus to them, Listen, peace be to you, as my Father has sent me. He said, Even so, send I you. So he showed us the very next verse how the Father sent him. That means he equipped me. The Father did something to me. And I'm about to do the same thing to you. And it will make you do the works that he did. Watch this. 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. He said, this is the secret. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. I transfer the ministry of the Holy Spirit from me to you. Let him walk with you. And you will do wonders. You will suddenly become a priest. You will suddenly become a king. The same way I set men free. He will empower you and you will set men free. The same way I spoke and it came to pass. Now the same way the Holy Ghost walked with me. This was my secret. Receive ye. Receive. That means you can reject him. He said receive. Don't reject him. Receive. When he comes to you, receive. His presence makes you become like Jesus. It's not about praying in tongues. It's more than praying in tongues. You receive him. You can reject him. Jesus said when he comes, receive, receive. Don't reject. Many people have been rejecting him. You are praying in tongues, but you've been rejecting him. Tonight, receive him. Receive him. Receive his ministry. Jesus said when he comes, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. The same way you receive a visitor. Question, how do you receive a visitor in your house? When a visitor comes, you put a chair. You say you are welcome. Let me bring food for you. What do you want? That's how to receive. You don't stand at the door and say, Mr. Man, what did you come to look for? That's how many of us are receiving the Holy Ghost. You are praying in tongues, but you truly have not received his ministry. Tonight, will you receive that ministry? Will you receive the same way you receive a visitor? The Bible says, be careful. Entertain men well. For in need, some of you have entertained strangers. That's why you see us honor his presence so much. Because Jesus left him. Without the Holy Spirit, while I was praying, I said, Holy Spirit, we're in partnership with you. I will do the talking. I will do all the things. My own part of the deal. I will do it well. And I know for sure. That's what gives us confidence to announce that people will be healed. That's what gives us confidence. There is an audacity. There is always a side to your life you cannot explain. That's the side where the Holy Ghost steps in. If you can explain everything about your life, you are walking alone. There should be a supernatural dimension. I've explained to you the part of the meeting that can be explained. The other part now, the Holy Ghost does not just talk. He explains it with the results. Oh, that's why I love him. Doesn't have room for long stories. Tonight, God is giving someone another opportunity to raise a cry of dissatisfaction and say, Lord, I'm tired. The worship team sang it beautifully. They said, I'm tired of the status quo. Tonight, there are many of us here who may be wondering, but what is wrong with my life? I've not done anything wrong. What you need is an appointment by prophecy. The Bible says to appoint unto them that morning Zion 
to give them beauty for ashes the oil of gladness for the spirit of heaviness it says that they may be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified we're going to pray the Lord has showed me of his presence in a mighty way to heal especially for the sick you must get angry this night and say Lord I'm not going back with that situation see don't get too used to it the same way you receive the Holy Spirit reject certain things hallelujah let me show you one scripture back to our text John 9 let me tell you what can happen to you when you don't open up your heart to receive John chapter 9 while I was reading today I had to stop and say goodness so this thing did not start now two things can happen to you if you do not position yourself to receive number one 9 verse 16 listen to what happened we have been accusing very innocent people around our society because we are not open to receive John 9 verse 16 are you ready read therefore said some of the Pharisees okay this man is this is Jesus they are talking about are you getting my point now they saw somebody receiving a fantastic miracle they saw this man getting blessed and now they were frustrated because this thing was not just working what kind of power is it there are probably some of you here who have heard of the things that God is doing and probably you just came to watch and see let me verify for myself look at it it didn't just start today Satan always wants to discredit people who are doing the things that God has asked them to do he said this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day what kind of silly excuse is that look at the excuse they were bringing those people lose their cattle they lose their cattle be careful lest you allow the devil cheat you by putting a very doubtful heart and you keep looking and say are miracles really real do people really get healed is it true it's a big shame that when people are healed we associate it most of the time to witchcraft power so we agree that witches and wizards can heal and then we are saying the lord of glory cannot heal verse 18 oh, oh, oh. but the jews did not do what the jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind that's another thing so you either say the man of god is not a genuine man of God or the miracle that happened is not genuine that's what they said they said we don't believe that the man has been born blind and received his sight until they called his parents so you can watch people SS genotype in your presence chain and he said there's no way I'm studying medicine or I'm a doctor this thing cannot happen or you watch somebody holding a crutch get healed or somebody blind or deaf or someone oppressed liberated and you say just like that just like that what are you doing are you seeing two things can happen when your heart is not open to receive you can sit down and keep doubting this man of god is he using something if it's easy to get the something get it how many of you remember one gentleman called sadiq ibrahim i never knew it was so difficult to get power from the kingdom of darkness until that guy came he came to give some of you were around that miracle service this guy was a terrorist he was a terrorist he was part of the people that trained those who fought for post election violence and he came was dying of hiv right dying of tuberculosis he had slept in the grave three days he said he could enter a church and look at a man of god and blow this whatever magic portion and the man of God will just get confused on the stage so he came for koinonia just like this and he was sitting outside 
Hallelujah. As soon as I came up on stage, when he saw people falling, he said, there's power in this place. Whether there's witchcraft power or God's power, there is power in this place. Because he knows what it means. The kind, he went to sleep in the grave for three days. Murdered little children and used their blood for sacrifice so that guns will not enter his body. Just for that little thing, see the sacrifice. You think it's easy to get power from Satan? Get it. Hallelujah. That guy was there. He's on video. As soon as I stepped on stage, he said, as soon as I came on stage, all he saw was light and fire. And that was the end of it. He didn't even know when he collapsed. Then I called him by word of knowledge. And I said he should come. He's on video. Go and watch it. Right there, he was healed of HIV. He was healed of tuberculosis. The results were there. I mean, some of you, we, then we used to meet also there. He testified. He gave his testimony. It was verified. It shocked him. That was when he made up his mind. They were still looking for him to kill him. Brothers and sisters, the power of God exists. Miracles still happen. I know that many of you believe, but you have not received that reality that your situation can change. Tonight, I believe God for somebody. Let's trust God together. Let's trust God together. Let's trust God together. And say, Lord, it can change. It can change. That genotype can change. They refuse to allow you marry because you are SS. That genotype can change. That genotype can change. You must not understand how everything can happen. The Bible says, just as you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of how a child, not the way of the wind. That's how you do not know the work of God. There are certain dimensions that are inexplainable. Hallelujah. Selena is here. Where is Selena? Wave your hand. I think it was her auntie that that one time we prayed for. She had triplets, right? Or something. The children are still alive. Triplets. One, two, three. Three children. I just felt a need to clear this air. Because some of you come with all kinds of cynical spirits. And you have problems that are killing you. But rather than opening your heart, you are there just wondering. Is God really the one doing this? Can somebody just fall down like that without being touched? Is it really true? Is it real? It's not your fault. It's the way some of us were raised. You don't have to be angry. Listen, listen. When you ever hear a man criticizing a man of God, don't blame the person. Never insult the person. They are only talking that while we were insulting Jesus Christ on the cross. What did he do? He said, Father, forgive them. Forgive them. Never find yourself trying to defend yourself. No, no. It's not part of your ministry. The psalmist said in Psalm 3, Thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. He says, You are my glory and the lifter up of my head. I always tell people, Gamaliel spoke beautifully. He said, If it is of God, no man can stop it. If it is not of God, it will fail. There's no one beside you. I lead the earth to worship you. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you. I lead the earth to worship you. I lead the earth to worship you. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, change our situations tonight. There are many of us as you're sitting looking at me right now the problem that you have is only god that can help you because the load is too much are you getting me there are some of you it's like i see you in the hospital your situation right now is a matter of life and death your own is just it's not just admission maybe there is a terminal disease i remember a particular lady i was talking to i think she might be somewhere here a habal is predicted her death today today this 25th 
the habit is predicted that is today that she will die so when i got to hear about it i said interesting come and die here hallelujah just come and die here there is a rod of a higher priesthood there is a rod of a higher priesthood is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am that's what god is asking somebody tonight is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am Prophesy. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Rise up on your feet and begin to prophesy. I believe you. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe. I believe. Everywhere, inside and outside, connect. This is the moment of faith. I'm about to step back and let this most Holy Spirit step into your life. Is there anything? Too hard for me to do. I, I am, am that I am. I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Come on, celebrate the God of miracles. Oh, oh, oh. Is there anything? For him to do, I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for him to do? I am that I am. Lift your hands, everybody, and let us worship him. Emmanuel, 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 your name is God, Emmanuel, your name is God.
Your name is God. Your name is God. Emmanuel. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His name is God. Emmanuel. His name is God. Listen. The Bible says, listen. It says, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things, what is not possible, with God, involve God and it becomes possible. That sickness will never go, but with God, that sickness suddenly leaves. That situation will never change, but with God. That's why we are singing that song, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, hiya. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. His name is called. Your name is called. Emmanuel. Before I minister, I begin ministering. Hallelujah. There are two people that God is going to visit in a very strong way. Hallelujah. Both of them are outside. Hallelujah. The power of God will come mightily upon them. I don't know what it is that God wants to do. Those outside, just lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. I see the angels of the Lord walking outside. Two people. The power of God is coming mightily right now as I speak upon them. Please let me have them inside. Two people, mightily. It's a strong spirit of prophecy in this place. Two people, very mightily. By the power of the Holy Ghost. His name is called Emmanuel. His name is called Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Those of you in this row, just lift your hands. I don't know what it is that I see the angels of the Lord doing here. I see the angels of the Lord moving at the count of three there will be such a move of the spirit in this road let me have the people outside thank you Jesus one two three let the power of God move right now right now is the fire of the Holy Ghost Emmanuel His name is God Emmanuel His name is God Emmanuel, his name is called Emmanuel, his name is called Bring her, no devil will stop her. Your name is called. Emmanuel, 
presence of God no demon no devil no altar I don't care what altar of darkness my altar is calling you oh God my altar is calling you oh God my secret place is calling you oh god my worship is calling you oh god my worship is calling you oh god take my praise Please lift your hands. I see the angels of the Lord moving now. Lift your hands. We're about to cause devils and wicked spirits. Please follow me, instrumentalist. We are going to cause every power. The Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father, that tree must give way. And I come under an apostolic anointing in the name of the one whose i am and whom i serve that at the count of three any power that is not of god inside and outside at the count of three we challenge those devils by the fire of the holy ghost as you shout three the power of god will rush inside and outside and there will be massive deliverances right now are you ready now one two Three shout Jesus. Shake up a pack of pros. I cause powers. Every wicked power. Every demon. Every activity of darkness. I cause you now. Now. 
now 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 every act of witchcraft by the fire of the holy ghost you come under the judgment of god inside and outside right now let the power of god bring deliverance for upon mount zion there shall be deliverance there shall be holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession hallelujah those outside just those outside goodness i see a number of angels you're going to shout jesus after the count of three outside means everywhere that is not in and there will be massive deliverance thank you jesus are you ready now those outside i see the power of god like files of fire one two at the count of three shout jesus three we dethrone altars we dethrone yokes of darkness hallelujah hallelujah blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Those outside be sensitive. There is so much power. I don't know what it is, but the, the power of God is so strong outside. In the name of our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Name of our God. Bring the lady. Most high. Most high. You're the Lord. Most high. Leave this girl in peace now. Go now. Let her go. Don't waste our time. Let her go now. Bring this lady, please. I set you free. Now, out of her now, that devil of darkness. Blessed is he who comes. Hallelujah. Please help her, ladies. It's not easy, I know. Just fine. It's time for her deliverance. Bring her. Force her, she will come now quickly. I call you, Lord. Most high. Don't touch her, she will come by herself. Most Let her go now. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go now. Thank you Jesus. I bring you liberty. Be free now. In Jesus name. She's free.
the name of Jesus. It's over. Let her go now. The blood of Jesus. The name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. You died for her. Let her go. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. Let her go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I give you all the praise. She's delivered completely in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. I anoint you guys. Let the anointing of the Spirit flow through you as you minister to In the name of Jesus. She will go. Come, lay hands on this lady. Out of her now, thou devil of darkness. I curse you. I see you in the Spirit. Out! Out! Let her go free. Her time of deliverance is now. I speak to you, wicked spirit. Let her go now. Jesus died. Listen, let me tell you. There is no power. Listen. There is no power that will resist the power of God tonight. The Bible says, let every soul be subject to the higher powers. Have you read that in your Bible? Let every soul be subject. When it sees powers that are higher than it, it should be subject. Let every soul. Hallelujah. Esther. 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 There is an Esther that is not feeling fine. You are sick. Not just, I know there are many Esthers. The Lord is ministering to me. I don't know what is wrong with that Esther, but you need a miracle, a healing miracle. Esther, please let's save time. There is a lot we have to do tonight. Esther. Who is Deborah? Deborah. Deborah, you are outside. That Deborah is wearing red. You are wearing red. Red with black spots. It's a shirt, red with black spots. Deborah, come. Your name is Deborah. I'm hearing the name Queen. Queen is, I think that's supposed to be a name. Queen. Who is Queen? Queen. Queen. Esther, come, come on. While you hold them, look, guys, speak to them and let them. You will waste your time with demon spirits, have a way of wasting people's time. Don't you will save yourself a lot of energy. It makes no difference who is speaking. Queen, who is queen? you are queen. I need to pray for you. You have a blood condition, Victoria. Victoria, 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 Victoria. I'm hearing the name Gabriel. Gabriel, who is Gabriel? Gabriel, please just save time when I mention your case. Gabriel Gabriel is outside outside the Lord is ministering to me outside Gabriel you are is it outside yes Gabriel is outside you are Gabriel you are outside hallelujah Come, my dear. What is wrong with you? I need to pray for you. Because the Lord is ministering to me. I saw this lady. And I saw something that looks like a lizard. And is sucking her blood physically. Look, come, come up. Look at this girl. Look at her. You will know that this girl doesn't look healthy. You don't even know what. And the Lord just opened my eyes. And I saw something like a lizard. 
just leads to her heart region and is just sucking her blood. This is how somebody just gets up and just dies. What happens to you? Your chest region. That devil is a liar. You'll be free. Hallelujah. There's no time to minister to your individual needs. Are you following me now? If God gives me a word for you, I'll just pray. Otherwise, ah, okay. come, 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 come. You must be set free. Now hold my hands. Out! Come out of her now. Out! Now! Blessed is he who comes. I set you free from this captivity. Be free now. Praise the Lord. I'm going to pray for you. Who is having serious abdominal pain? You're having pain, just your stomach region here, very seriously. One of you here, because I'm feeling that same pain, so I know. You? Let me pray for you. But, but that's, that's not really the major thing wrong with you. What's wrong with you? now thank you Jesus I bring you the power that is in the name of Jesus lay your hands on your stomach be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray for all of these people as I lay hands on you it doesn't matter what the situation is in the name of Jesus Christ I set you free in the name of Jesus Christ walk into the blessings and the promises of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be set free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be set free. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, the Lord is showing me about three people. There's a severe skin infection that is, you have done all you, it's a very serious thing. In fact, it's even embarrassing. It's even embarrassing. There are three people. This is one, there's, there's there's two more please quickly it's a serious thing you have you have prayed about it you have used drugs nothing has gone please i'm seeing three people it's time for god to set you free don't worry if there are still more people you can connect i'm just telling you the one that god is showing me. i don't care what it is we sang that god will set you free please don't come out here to try god it will leave i don't care what it is hallelujah thank you jesus please those with peptic ulcers just get ready all kinds of ulcers we're going to pray for you now please make sure it's, it's only skin infection only skin infection hold my hands madam i set you free in the name of jesus be free now be free now in the name of jesus be free now in the name of jesus as i pray for you just go back to your seat oh, the power of god is strong on my hands be free now in the name of Jesus, I cause that spirit be free now. In the name of Jesus, let him go. I set you free. Be free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause skin infection in the name that is above all names. Hold my hands. Look at me. Look at me. I'm seeing you tied. Not only are you I pray that God will visit you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let her go free in the name of Jesus. Let her go free right now in the name of Jesus. You're suffering from any kind of ulcer, any kind of ulcer. We're just flowing as the Holy Ghost is, is ministering right now. There is a lot to be done. So please, ulcers, ulcers, God is ministering to me. visit your people oh god these are the ones that you died for look how many people 
are inflicted by ulcers i'll pray for you very quickly please i want you to believe as i lay my hands on on you the power of god will come upon you and you'll be free just begin to breathe in some of you will feel because the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing it you will feel something leave you just come out of you hallelujah thank you jesus christ be free now out come out of her now in the name of jesus out out of her Thank you, Jesus Christ. Be free right now. Out! Out! Please, as I pray for you, check yourself. He's able. Out! Come out! I will pray for you and I will talk to you. The name of Jesus Christ I set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost I set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ I set you free be free now in the name of Jesus Christ be free in the name of Jesus Christ he's able bring the lady shout in there Hey, hey, hey. Say he's able. Let her go in the name of Jesus. I set you free by the power of the highest. Say God he's able. able. God is able. God. Command that spirit of infirmity leave her right now never to return be free now in jesus name complete freedom
I can never repay you Brought from the depths of my heart I'd like you to know that I Grateful As a family will never be able to pay you For the mighty things you've done But tonight we say Thank you it's For the things you have done and the battles you have won Only you are worthy of my praise We I magnify your name It's for the things, the healings, the breakthroughs you have done And the battles you and the battles have won, you have won. Only you For the things, for the things, for the things you have, you have done, done, and the battles, and the battles you, have won, you have won. Only you, only you are worthy, worthy of, are worthy of, of my praise. praise. We magnify your name, Lord. We glorify. We magnify your name. We give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. We give thanks because you give us Jesus Christ. A grateful heart, we give thanks to the Holy One. We give thanks because you give us given Jesus Christ. Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so we sing and then. Bigger than what we call you. 
bless you. Hallelujah. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Many of you do not know why we bless His name. Hallelujah. The principle of thanksgiving is the principle of multiplicity. Whatever you give God glory for multiplies. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Walk up to ten people, give them a big hug. Come on, bless one another. Tell them I bless you. It's good to see you. You have the power to bless inside and outside. I bless you. I bless you. Come on, go ahead. Bless them. It's within your power to speak a blessing. Give them a big hug and bless them. Make sure you're smiling. Hallelujah. the best worship team in this side of God's kingdom. Come on now. They deserve it. Great people. Hallelujah. Joshua 14. I trust that the Lord will bless you away tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Joshua 14, are you there? I'll begin my reading from verse 6. Father, let your word bless your people tonight. In Jesus' name. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him thou knowest the thing that the lord said unto moses the man of god concerning me and thee in kadesh Barnea. 40 years old was i when moses the servant of the lord sent me to spy out the land and i brought him word again as it was in my heart nevertheless my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt but I wholly followed the Lord my God. Take note. I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine in inheritance, and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed my God. Take note. All of these things, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spoke this word to Moses. What a long time. While the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day, first call, and five years old. 
As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. And my strength, and as my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. Ready? Verse 12. Stop. He said, Now therefore, give me this mountain. Wherefore the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest in that day how the Anakims, the giants were there, and that the cities were a great land and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord has said. Next verse. For an inheritance. Let me finish it up. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, because you will bless your word. I'm preaching a very powerful message tonight that I trust will challenge us. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Even if you don't understand it yet, you will understand at the end of the teaching. So say, give me this mountain. Ah, yeah. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to unveil to you the spiritual dimension of success. The spiritual component of success. Say it one more time. Give me this mountain. Some of you, God will answer this prayer because you mean it from your heart. One more time, say, give me this mountain. Hallelujah. Now, if you've been following our teachings on the kingdom, the Bible says how that at a certain time, Joshua and Caleb were sent to as spies to spy the land of Canaan and its environs. And the Bible says they came back. A few of them came, two of them really, with very good news. They said, we saw giants, we saw different people, but the land was flowing with milk and honey. Let's go up at once. And others, their hearts melted. And on account of his courage, Moses promised him that when the time of apportioning the land comes, that land that he saw and believed would be his inheritance, he should be given. And so when the time came, he reminded Joshua. He said, Joshua, remember, over 40 years ago, when the hearts of many were failing, I said I was able to take on this mountain. Now is the time. Give me this mountain. Hallelujah. There are seven mountains that have been responsible for human influence on the earth. We've thought about this, but let's do a quick revision. Please write seven mountains number one family this is where the foundation of every life is built or destroyed the family this is where values are inculcated hallelujah number two education this is where truth or error is built this is the place of molding. This is where people get mindsets. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For an average of 18 to 20 years, the average Nigerian spends that time at least educating himself. A great mountain. Great sphere of influence. Number three. The media. The media has an enormous influence. The largest gathering in any single meeting has been over two or three million. That was in a Benihin crusade, the largest recorded gathering of human beings. A total of six million within three days. But you can reach a total viewing audience of over hundred million within five minutes. The media, mind control systems. Ready for the next one? Arts and entertainment.
this mountain has a great influence defines many things to us what we call sort failure that's number what number five politics and governance this is where legislations are made for or against the kingdom hallelujah if abortion is legalized somebody passed it into law if god is exalted in a nation somebody passes it into law politics and governance very 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 important hallelujah number six who can remember the sixth one huh sport is part of art and entertainment religion almost everybody is following somebody whether they are right or wrong they are just following somebody hallelujah go and type wall religion and see how many followers religion is a powerful system people have died for it hallelujah people have gotten phd and died the next day for a cause they believe was worth dying for and the last one the economy or the business world if you want to put it that way seven mountains that shape and mold human existence now please listen this is very important because when we talk of advancing the kingdom it must be structural and definite hallelujah what we have been taught in the body is just do evangelism and bless souls but when we talk about advancing the kingdom it's important for us to understand the spheres of influence hallelujah every degree of influence on earth today is through the seventh one the economy hallelujah is that true the family is a major issue whatever goes wrong in the family affects society hallelujah education whatever they teach you is what you will stand for work for and be paid for the media it's amazing how that in five minutes you can receive a news whether true or false hallelujah remember that issue of that that man that ogre of the top ogre the top issue even people in the village got to hear that news the media arts and entertainment they have informed everything that we do practically everybody wants to become like a, that's where success is displayed using different parameters that's where you see sports celebrities when anyone makes it they get there to show you so that you will model their lives very important number five politics and governance hallelujah you can have money but if they don't give you land you won't build is that correct they can legislate a law in five minutes that will literally crumble the advancement of the kingdom of god like many ministers who are caught and jailed and killed in many nations it is because some people sat down in the parliament to legislate is that true number six religion it's done probably the biggest harm to mankind everybody believes in the existence of something bigger than himself whether he can be humble enough to accept it or not religion and finally the economy the interesting thing about the economy is that it fuels every other mountain hallelujah the bible says money is the root of all evil what does that mean the root of any tree is where the tree gets its nourishment hallelujah seven mountains say give me this mountain 
Say one more time, give me this mountain. Hallelujah. And I have studied for quite some time uh, seeking from God's word to find out how to strategically advance the kingdom of God and to be able to define success. Please listen to me. All of these mountains have been able to define success to people. There are certain things that society have told us that you must do in the family to be considered successful as a family man. Same thing for education. Same thing for media. But right now with the lens of God's word, it's important for believers to begin to scrutinize the things that we have upheld, defined as success. Hallelujah. For some of us, success is when you get rich, you have a car, you travel abroad, go to Dubai, Hawaii, and so on and so forth. When you build a house, for some of us, success is when you build an orphanage. All of these informations that we have about success were given to us through one or more of these structures. Is that true? But tonight we are going to examine God's word. While the mountains and the spheres of influence were being apportioned to people, Caleb said, this is the one I want. Give me this mountain. I can take it. I want to show you the spiritual dimension of success. The second thing I want you to know tonight is that every of these mountains are controlled by spirits. Hmm. Did you hear what I said? Every one of these mountains are controlled by spirits. Caleb said, in that land there were certain gigantic superhuman figures called anakims waiting for anybody who would dare to step into any of those fields can i tell you something listen if you get what i'm teaching you tonight you will accelerate your success in life that any one of this fair you choose to go there are spiritual entities keepers of the gates of these fairs hallelujah that dare to wait for any man. I have studied successful people both in the world and in the church. And I like studying their ideologies to find out what informed their mindsets. And I watched an interview that was conducted for Bill Gates. Again, the richest man now. Hallelujah. And they asked him, what is the secret of your success? And he said something that disturbed me. You know what he said? He said, I was at the right place at the right time. That's a scary statement. He said, and in that right place, many people had what I had. How can this be the secret of a man's success? I was at the right place at the right time. When they gave us a certain information, many people had it just like I did. But I was the one who took action. This is what he told us the secret of his success is. Now before you get me wrong, Bill Gates is a very hard working man. Some of you say, hey, I know, uh-uh. They are the places of principles. But I want you to understand that there is the spiritual dimension. Everybody says spiritual dimension. If you do not understand this, you will be cheated grossly in life. Every one of these mountains have spiritual entities. Hallelujah. God appointed Daniel and God was going to send him to one of these mountains of politics and governance. And the Bible said, paraphrasing now, how that Daniel understood the spiritual component of success and he was always praying. From his secret place, he was disturbing certain people. Hallelujah. 
All that they were concerned about was his prayer life. And they started finding ways. They said, King, can you pass a law just on somebody's prayer life? Because there were some, there's something called the gods of the Medians and the Persians. Say, who is this guy? Every time we look across this fair, there's somebody defined. Are you learning something? One of the things that many people, especially young people, do not know is that spiritual. Help me, please. Either this or another mic. Everybody say after me, success is Hallelujah. My friend TK is here. He's a graduate of Lagos Business School. Hallelujah. He just returned. You ask him from a spiritual perspective, he can tell you. There is no man who is extremely successful in any sphere of life that has not bowed down to something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let anybody fool you, brothers and sisters. In the days of Elijah, there were certain prophets who were taking over the mountain of religion and they were enjoying. Is that true? The Bible calls them prophets of... He didn't call them prophets. He called them prophets of who? Who is Baal? Prophets of Baal. They enjoyed their time during that dispensation. Because there was a goddess called Jezebel that was married to the man who sat at the seat of governance. Listen to me. I want to shorten your journey in life to achieving lasting and true success. Hallelujah. And this woman, the Bible tells us that she was the one who was overseeing those prophets. Is that true? How can a woman, they were, they were called prophets of Baal. But why did they submit to her? Jezebel. Anything that touched those prophets, she knew it from the secret place. Nobody went to tell her it was Elijah that caused trouble. Immediately Elijah caused trouble. She sent people from her palace. She said, look for this man and kill him. Are, are, you, are you getting something tonight? Every one of this mountain has spiritual entities because Satan is called the God of this world and Satan has strategically, he understands that whoever takes this mountain whoever exerts any degree of influence upon this mountain will change the course of history whether for or against God are you listening to me? And Caleb said, I know that there have been certain people in that mountain, but give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Hallelujah. How many of you believe what I'm teaching tonight? Because you see, a, a lot of us believe that you just get up and just walk into these mountains and just become a CEO of a company. You think so? Go and find out how many politicians do not sleep because they have to keep revisiting altars and diabolical things. Already 2015 is already being prepared. Is that true? Then, ah. How come we have believers who have not been trained to understand times and seasons? I want to show you the spiritual dimension of success. We have studied a lot of principles, but I need you to know this is what many young people do not know in Nigeria. They graduate with joy and excitement and enter the labor market and they are keepers of the gates. They say, no way, it doesn't happen like that. Hmm. Suddenly you see somebody leaves people for a while. The next thing he steps and every gate is opening up to him. No, something happened. Did you hear what I said? Something what? Somebody gets up. The next thing is controlling the arts and the entertainment. Flawlessly. People are buying his tapes, buying everything. And you listen to it, there's nothing that edifies you, whether socially or spiritually. But you wouldn't know what would take you. Say, give me this mountain. 
the bible says listen it says the sons of this world are wiser paraphrasing wiser the whole world lieth in wickedness wake up grow up the earth is more rude than you have been taught in the media there is a fierce contention of light and darkness are you hearing what i'm saying This is a paradigm that many people are not taught. They just say, oh, don't worry. Just build yourself and see how you will ride gloriously into this mountain. Hmm. Keep us at the gate. When Jesus was taking on this mountain of religion to open it up, he was coming out of the grave and this keeper said, who is this that wants to come out? He said, lift up your heads, O ye. The gates were people because they responded. They said there is no man that has gone out of this realm and brought himself back except somebody in that realm calls him. But Jesus died and wanted to bring himself. They say, uh uh, it doesn't happen that way. We are keepers of the gate. He said, I'm being lifted ancient doors. What kind of doors? Why didn't he just say doors? They have been there. Ancient doors. He says, somebody wants to enter and prove a point in this mountain that the earth is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. And the gates answered. They said, interesting. So, we know many people, but who is this guy called the king of glory? He needed a reintroduction. What makes you believe? Listen. The moment John was born, the spirit of the Antichrist began to move in the scribe. They said, are you the one we are expecting? Because the gates have been informed that somebody will come in a time and wreak havoc. So they kept searching. They thought it was John the Baptist. That's why they caught him. The moment Jesus announced, behold the Lamb of God, that was it. He said, make sure this guy dies. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. Highest praise to the King. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. Highest praise to the King. The labor market in Nigeria are governed by spirits. Did you hear what I'm saying? There is no reason why we should have so many people jobless. They are governed by wicked spirits. I've had the opportunity to meet a few successful people and I can tell you their success is irritating. I don't envy it forever. Let me tell you something. It's not like you cannot enter, but they will give you the condition for entering. Are you getting me? When these gates stop you, the first question they ask you is, where is your allegiance? Because nobody enters here for nothing. No. Who are you representing? Who sent you? You want to build a bank. You want to own a bank. They will ask you, who sent you? Whose cause are you representing? You want to come out as a man of God and be great and build a big ministry. They will ask you. And then they will give you an option. They will say, here it is. Is there is a way we can negotiate. This is what Satan came to do to Jesus Christ. He said, I know that these are the keys you came to collect. So let's negotiate. If you bow to me, I will ease this journey. Say, give me this mountain. When Jesus was born, the signal got to Herod immediately. Immediately. Gates ancient doors that really govern what we call success satan is not a fool he was once in heaven he has positioned strategically 
America is considered a successful nation. They are in debt of 17 trillion US dollars. You know how many generations it will take to pay? Because the devil orchestrated it intelligently to mortgage the destiny of the generations after them. A time will come it will hook them. And when it hooks them, Mammon will call them for negotiation. And they must negotiate. Who are these kind of people who want to take these mountains? They will ask you, where are you coming from? Say, I'm a graduate of ABU. They say, so what? Go and ask how many people have come to this gate are reversed. Sometimes you want to use force and you sustain casualties. Tonight, I want to show you, if you understand this singular teaching, you will gain accurate explanation to what is happening in this country. What Satan is seeking, listen, the youth is the fruitful part of the nation. Is that true? They are the fruitful part. Satan knows what they want. Satan knows that every young man that graduates, every young man that gets married is looking for certain things, establishment and the rest. And he said, close those doors so that when they are pressured, they will come back for negotiation. And that's what is happening. Is that true? Mysterious success and wealth that cannot be explained. Any man just travels and comes back smiling. He cannot even explain what happened. All he, that's why when he hears you talking business principles and titans, he says, ah, that's your cup of tea. He says, look at these suffer-head people. Hallelujah. Is that true? That's why there are certain rich people that don't bless. They can't bless, not even their wives. It's not that they are greedy. They bow to something. This is the condition for it. Other people, a man cannot sleep with his wife certain conditions are given there are people who listen let me tell you something i met a man i met a man maybe early this year in abuja or so and he actually came out of one devilish dirty business sect and all of that and he said something he said they are only allowed to do any business transactions on mondays and on fridays it's happening in your country you will be surprised if I tell you those who are involved in this. Only when? Very busy people, but they are so free throughout the day. You break that rule, you pay for it. Hallelujah. And they called him somewhere. He was supposed to do a business something with somebody. And when he went there, they called him by 10 a.m., pastor. He went and sat down in the parlor. Nobody attended to him till about 7 or so in the morning. They just left him there. Say, oh God, don't, you better let your eyes not sleep. Warn your eyes to stay awake. Hmm. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the dominion. You have taken all you have made them yours highest praise to the king satan wants a situation where everyone in the next few years who will stand in this mountain must be people who are bowed to him and so godlessness the, these are the mountains that will rebuild the tower of babel are you listening to me but the Bible says, Obadiah 21, Saviors shall arise out of another mountain called Zion. And they will judge the mountain of Esau. What is it about these mountains? Hmm. Saviors shall arise. Because you see, when the prophets of Baal were bowing down, little did they know that there were 7,000 others under the custody of Obadiah. They were being prepared to contend. And one day, Elijah said, come on, there's no hiding. Let's climb the mountain and deal with this issue. If God be God, the God that answers by fire, I say is God. He said, Baal, we are on a mountain now. 
Are you learning something? Let me tell you. If all, I'm, I'm not talking about 10,000 naira as a teacher or something. Just one small room for you and your... Or if that's what you want, nobody will contend with you. Just get it. You can sell the charge card and get it. But there is a level. It's like there is a spiritual meter. The moment you rise, they say, uh -uh, no way, it doesn't happen this way. But the Bible says, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit. Hallelujah. Many of our loved ones are applying job to job to job to job to job with every kind of qualification. Nothing is happening. There are many people who have tried everything they know to do, every principle. But it's because they do not understand the spirituality of life. That's why wealthy and successful people don't have many friends. They only have their kinds of circles. You can't talk with them. You can't relate. Your vocabulary is not their vocabulary. One more time, say, give me this mountain. This is what is happening in Abuja. There are altars and sacrifices serviced every day. Every day for the success of people. But we have many believers who just get up and we just mumble a few confessions and we run and we believe we are coming to enter this mountain and the gate say, you think so? Even Jesus, they ask him a question first before allowing him to enter. Hallelujah. You're ready with the documentary? You watch a documentary now for five minutes. Just five minutes that will challenge you. Hallelujah. Please make sure those outside have it too. Five minutes. Hallelujah. As I began to study these things, I found out that I was not alone in this pursuit. There were so many people that God had revealed this thing to. Hallelujah. Is the volume okay? Just take your time, set it, and then play. It was August 1975, and the Lord had given me that day a list of things that I had never thought about before. He said, this is the way to reach America and nations for God. In every city of the world, an unseen battle rages for dominion over God's creation and the souls of people. This battle is fought on seven strategic fronts, looming like mountains over the culture to shape and influence its destiny. Over the years, the church slowly retreated from its place of influence on these mountains, leaving a void now filled with darkness. When we lose our influence, we lose the culture, and when we lose the culture, we fail to advance the kingdom of God. And now, a generation stands in desperate need. It's time to fight for them and take back these mountains of influence. The mountain of government. Where evil is either restrained or endorsed. The mountain of education. Where truths or lies about God and his creation are taught. The mountain of media. Where information is interpreted through the lens of good or evil. The mountain of arts and entertainment, where values and virtue are celebrated or distorted. The mountain of religion, where people worship God in spirit and truth, or settle for a religious ritual. The mountain of family, where either the blessing or a curse is passed on to successive generations. And the one mountain they all depend on, the mountain that fuels and funds all the other mountains, the mountain of business, where people build for the glory of God or the glory of man, where resources are consecrated for the kingdom of God or captured for the powers of darkness. Those who lead this mountain control what influences our culture. The last 50 years, we've seen the most rapid moral decline in history. The culture we inherited from our forefathers is disintegrating before our eyes. What kind of world are we leaving for our children and grandchildren? 
As long as the business mountain is held by enemies of the gospel, funding for the other mountains will always be constrained, and any efforts to advance the kingdom of God will be hindered. Imagine God's people reclaiming their cities and government, in the arts and entertainment, in the media, in education, in the family, in religious influence, but only limited by their imagination and not by a lack of finances. It's possible, but first, we must take back the mountain of business. God's move to take this mountain back has already begun. Thousands and thousands of business leaders in every major city across the nation are filling arenas to learn from business leaders and hear the gospel of Christ. 90% of people working in the marketplace believe in God. 78% believe spirituality and business mix. 70% say that because of their faith, they find meaning and purpose in life. There are over 56 million Bible-believing Christians working in the marketplace. A vast army of God waiting to be truly engaged in the battle. Yet this strategic army and battlefront has largely been left ignored by the church. More than 90% of church members do not feel they are being equipped or trained by the church to apply biblical faith in their day-to-day -day life. The Business Mountain is so strategic because that is the place of influence. When you look at culture, so much of culture is defined by what happens in business. If we would use the wealth of the world to bless the world, and bless it not only to distribute to the needy that which they need. When you bring economy and economic benefit to a nation or a culture, uh, then you have influence in that culture. People, as they're transformed, who will transform all the spheres of society. It is time to reclaim the seven mountains and bring the life of God back into our culture. Hallelujah. Right, praise God. Let's continue. Were you blessed? Seven mountains. Powerful. Hallelujah. So there is a spiritual conspiracy. Hallelujah. To rob believers of meaning and fulfillment in their lives. And listen. For as long as all that we preachers keep teaching people is do your quiet time, be nice, get up, be happy. A time will come there will be more trouble than the people can handle. Because very soon they will find out they need to get married. They will find out they need to take care of children. Is that true? They will find out they need to get a job. They will find out they need to at least build a house where they will put their heads under. And then that's where the trouble begins. Say one more time, give me this mountain. If the youth in Nigeria do not understand the spiritual dimension of success listen to me i am telling you there is going to be big trouble in this country the media did a documentary for us one time and you saw how that less than 10 percent of people who ever graduate in the university ever get the opportunity to be absorbed in the labor market this is scary I was talking with someone and he told me something. He said over 75% of the jobs in this country cannot secure the people who are working. You know what they call job security? That you can guarantee. In fact, the person was telling me that there are only four jobs based on his analysis that he can call secure jobs. Lecturing, military, and I, I can't remember the other two that he gave. Anything teaching or military and then farming. You are working in farming or any farming institute or something. Go and ask the average graduate who is working. Say, what is the name of where you are working? Say, I don't even know. It's just there after three months. Say, what happened to that job? He said, Talk. the person and the job, nobody even knew what was happening. So this concerns you. Because many of us are just happy. You have applied all the principles. 
And there is a place for that we've taught. But I want you to know that until you compel these spiritual entities to bow, there must be a higher operation of the spirit. This is what will grant you access to enter and not only reign, but not, not reclaim as dethrone everybody, but give God space in that mountain to begin to find expression. Are you getting blessed? One more time, say, give me this mountain. The journey of success in the kingdom begins with defining your purpose for success and your allegiance to God. This is very important. The Bible says Moses kept, I mean, Joshua kept saying, Caleb will get this mountain because he wholly followed the Lord. There must be a basis for these mountains to open up for you. I want to ask you a question tonight. What is your, what, why do you want to be successful? Why do you want to be prosperous? If, if the circumference of your desire for prosperity is so that you can have enough money to marry or feed your children or do all of this, that mountain will not open up for you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Your allegiance must be defined I was listening to a woman of God she was talking and she said that a particular governor's wife went and met a very wealthy business mogul in this country to just talk to him and ask for an assistance and something for the church and he laughed and looked at her he said it should never be hard that I will ever do anything to support the church he said it should never 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 it cannot be hard Believers, open your eyes and see that there is a conspiracy behind the scene. And this conspiracy did not just start. When they started it decades ago, it looked like an impossible mission. But Satan is very patient. It's believers that are impatient. Satan kept allowing one generation to die. The ones who would preserve this truth to die. Now we are the generation in between. We will either give up and lose all on it or stand and say, give me this mountain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I foresee that in the next five to ten years in this country, nobody will, who, the, the spirituality of wealth had never been a mystery. Go and ask the Freemasons and the Illuminatis. They've known this for years. Hallelujah. People make money off war that happens in this country. For every time there is bomb blast, somebody is making money. This is somebody's business. You think you will stop? For as long as there is no electricity in this country, somebody's business is blossoming. You believe the person will sit down and allow laws that will support it to be legislated? Say one more time, give me this mountain. Wake up. Don't let people fool you. Take responsibility over your destiny and walk to God and say, Lord, I declare my allegiance. This is our concentration this night. We're not really talking about principles. I want to bring you to a point where the ultimate test of your success in life will be a clear definition of whose side you are standing. If that question is not answered, forget about success. Did you hear what I said? I am telling you this. Whether success in family, in education, whatever it is, the world is becoming fierce and unfriendly by the day. And you will need to define who are you in fraternity with. There is no issue of standing here or there. No, no. As you rise in success, the, the place that you are standing becomes more defined. Beyond your adherence to principles, you will need to stand and define it before God and before men that this is my agenda. I am a kingdom addict out to support the cause of the kingdom. There is no pretending it. There is no being diplomatic about it. This is where I stand. When that happens, God that you have declared to will be the ones to compel these forces to bow. Are you listening to me? This is very important. That's why there are certain people, some of you, 
when your loved ones begin to rise to certain levels, the enemy just takes them away out of the scene and the whole family returns back to square one. Another person tries to rise, they just take them away. They say it doesn't happen that way. We have been the ones governing blessings and wealth in this village or in this place. Now you didn't grow up in the village, you grew up in the town. You watch CNN, Cartoon Network. And you suddenly believe that Cartoon Network has wiped them away. They are saying we are still here. That's why those guys don't die in the village. People don't die anyhow. They live old. They say I'm watching. 90 years, I'm still strong. No glasses, I'm watching. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain. You must make up your mind that right now you will define your allegiance. Prosperity will never come to you until you do not, until you define for what cause is going to be used. Without ambiguity, there must be clarity. And you're going to say, Lord, this is for your kingdom. This is why we train and build people in the world every time. This issue of hiding things, I am telling you the truth. Do you know every time I get to meet people, pastor, people I used to know years ago, Abuja and around, once you see them, you see that there is, there is a disappointment in God. It's as if, God, what did you do? I served you. I served you. I was fellowship president. I was this and that. This is not fair. A lot of people go to God and say, God, this is not fair. But I need you to know you can sit down and call God fair or not. If you do not rise up to realize that life in its entirety is spiritual. Success in its entirety is spiritual. You start spiritually, it is maintained spiritually, you will end it spiritually. If you can get this revelation, I've saved you frustration of decades. Hallelujah. Caleb saw giants, yet he didn't even talk about them. He said, Joshua, you just give me. If God will be with me, these giants are a simple case. There are many of us right now. You're going to be released to the labor market. Many of you are happy. Believing it is through your uncle or your auntie or through one connection. Let me tell you early enough. Stop wasting your time. Because if you do get that job, you will find out that it's easier to get a job than to stay there. When you enter there, you will find out that there is a war that has been going on. Just like our brother came to share, that a woman just looked at him and didn't like him. Welcome to the root shock of this system. This is how it works. It's not strange. It's not like she victimized him. It's how Satan designed the system to work. And then one day you announce that you are going to build a secondary school in your community. And he said, everybody just come to laugh. And they go back and sit on their mountains and say, all right, you build a school. You know, see, believers, let me tell you something. If you do not understand, or you just get up and say, ah, I want to get married. You just see a lady and you say, you want to get married. Marry. As you finish the marriage, you will suddenly find out that your whole life and the marriage has no life. To an extent, you will be begging 10,000 for school fees. What is happening? Everybody say, give me this mountain. These are mind control systems. What is, what is the aim of Satan putting gates in these places? To make sure that God's value system and the advancement of the kingdom bringing many to righteousness that means you cannot do business till you play crooks and pranks is that true and now that's the order of the day it has a name what do we call it corruption is that true a lady cannot get a job with the dignity of kingdom integrity until she sleeps with somebody it's not about sexual pleasure brothers and sisters there are prostitutes around are you hearing what i'm saying it's about causing the zion of god to compromise Praise God. Hmm. And then you get up and say, God is leading me to be the chairman of a local government or to be a governor. 
and you just get up and stroll. You see us pray, you are just laughing and say, these people, the wisdom that I have, really? You will see the seats like this. Go and sit down. You will be able to see it. It's free. Go and sit down. The Bible says, and he has been exalted above every other name, whether they be thrones or dominions or every name that is named. Not just in this realm. There are human beings that travel to astral realms. I told you this thing when we were talking about, what were we talking about? I cannot remember. I told you about the UFOs or this. I have a documentary in my laptop of excavators that were digging into the earth and they found out that there was a 13 story building they found somewhere 13 story building beyond, beyond this earth occupied by aliens the aliens killed one of the people just touched his heart and see let me tell you i'm opening you up to something you may learn when you are 50 years old when life has whipped you and you are saying half that's how many what jubilee down 50 is what golden jubilee you now say god what is this many of our parents know this thing that's why they are quiet when they see us just jumping i must get there they just keep quiet they say you don't know what i've been through i had zeal some of them were planning to work in railway corporation they were happy they had people to connect them believers hear me there is a spiritual dimension to life these gates are occupied by wicked spirits with one primary agenda to compel men to bow to Baal, to bow to the spirits that are responsible for these gates when you bow it will open up to you the day you stop bowing it will check you out it doesn't matter what level are you hearing what i'm saying that's why wealthy people are more concerned in maintaining their altars than doing business let me tell you the truth you don't see them they hire people there are all kinds of occultic groups and organizations in this country that have a lot of people belonging that's what has been responsible for their success but hear me there is a kind of people arising are you hearing what i'm saying there is an uncompromising army arising the bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be like we have been staring at these mountains and they've been staring at us but tonight you will need to say give me this mountain i can take it i can take this mountain without compromising i can stand hallelujah you can take the mountain of media. You can take the mountain of everything. Where you will know, anywhere you are, you know that God is there. You are not pretending it. You know, there is this ugly thing that believers do in the name of socialization. They are afraid to stand ruthlessly for God because they suspect God may fail them. So they say, let's keep one leg here. God has been used to disappointing people. In case... If it doesn't work, I quickly move my leg and I say, I was not there in the first place. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, if God is to bless you, you must be uncompromising. Wealth is spiritual. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Wealth is what? Spiritual. Oh, I, I shared with the leader something. Maybe if we have time, we'll look at it before we pray. There are some things that are not found in the earth realm. Are you hearing me? There is a kind of wisdom that produces success. The Bible says, Job speaking, he said, we went to Hades where dead people are and said, they said we have heard of his fame but we don't know where it is. He went to the mountains where people excavate rocks and the rest. And they said, we've not heard of it. He said, it is not within the sight of the living. There are certain dimensions of success that is not in the earth realm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You manifest it in the earth realm, but you don't get it here. It's not a commodity that can be transacted here. Uh -uh. You must leave this earth realm and get it from another realm. Then you will come back and transact it. I show you a mystery. Let me share with you a personal testimony of something that happened to me. One time I was praying. And when I was praying, please listen. 
I was praying and I began to sense an unusual presence. It was like my spirit was leaving my body. And when I was praying, suddenly, watch this. I saw a being just stood. Maybe, maybe about 18 to 21 feet tall. Listen to me. Are you listening to me? A mighty, it looked like these sea creatures, these antelopes, not, you know, these big sea creatures. The eyes alone as, are bigger than the head of a man. Two red fierce eyes and the tail was a serpent, a real snake. I don't know how that kind of creature was. And he was looking at me. I was looking at it. This is not some metaphysical jargons. I was looking at it and it was looking at me. Hallelujah. And you know what he told me? You want me to tell you? He spoke to me. And he said, so you believe that you are going to bring God's people into blessings. That's what he was looking at me. Everybody say, give me this mountain. I feel sorry for believers who just sit down and believe that because of the connection they have, success will come. It won't work that way. The world is changing. It's changing fast. The earlier you know this, you stand your ground and you command victory. He said you will arise and shine for your light is come. Hallelujah. I shared with you about the man who came for miracle service here with HIV. How did he get the HIV? He was not promiscuous. When I saw him, I said, ah, this man is an elderly man and he's a gentleman. He said he was sleeping in the night. Somebody appeared to him literally with a syringe and said this is HIV virus injected it into him and he woke up in this realm with HIV I want you to listen I'm not scaring you I'm only opening your eyes the Bible says blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm upon my holy mountain if you do not understand this there is a rootless shock waiting for you are you hearing what I'm saying give me this mountain when we finished we finished the miracle service. I went home. Now, I'm not, see, don't get me wrong. I'm not the kind of person that sees demons behind everything. No, no. I'm an intelligent person. Are you listening to me? But I went home. The protocol department are here. They were there with me. As soon as I got home, I saw a bed inside our, inside our, the pavement. There is no human way a bed, even an, even a, maybe a snail can get to enter there. It was moving around. My neighbor saw it and quietly entered and locked her door. She said, Joshua Selma will come and handle it. Immediately I came out. I sensed in my spirit. It was counselor. Immediately I saw it, I looked. And I looked at it very well. I knew that this was not just... See, there are some realms that you are not creating any effect in the spirit. So you are not an issue for Satan. He's concentrating on those who are making things happen. So you think you are advancing spiritually. Because you think nothing is happening. I'm just praying five minutes and things are working. Keep rising. Just keep rising. A time, you will, come, a time will come when the effect becomes severe. And at that point, you will notice that it's not as funny as you think it is. I show you a mystery. So the Bible says, woe to them. When we talk about prayer, when we talk about staying in the word of God, for many of you, you don't see the need. You say, whether I pray or I don't pray, things happen for me. Continue. Continue. You have not created an effect. You throw a small stone. The ripple is just a little. But you carry a rock and throw it. Once that happens, the fishes inside start coming out. What is going on? Everybody say, give me this mountain. We are going to pray. Because tonight, you must define what you want to do with success. For you to ever arrive there. This is the same thing they will tell you when you go to a herbalist place. Are you hearing me? Imagine that you are in a herbalist shrine now. This is the exact question. They won't ask you how many books you have read. They will tell you, are you ready to come into fraternity? As far as they are concerned, that's the most important thing. You say yes. They say, alright. Prove to us that you will not fail us. That's the concept of covenants. You do different things to prove that you will stand and then they open your eyes and once in a while they keep reminding you 
that they are around. Hallelujah. Do you know how the Illuminati initiate people? Let me explain something to you. Wealthy people, billionaires. Let me tell you how you get initiated. You, get, you don't get initiated by going to a place. You get initiated through your imagination. What that means is, if I want to initiate you into the Illuminati, you will stand. You will close your eyes and I'll be initiating you. This is how they initiate people. Close your eyes and now say, imagine a door. Now enter that door. There is something carry you would think it's just some spooky imagination then you'll find yourself there truly and you'll find the person who is imagined from there your imagination is useless they continue the ceremony these are not realms this is what job said he said this wisdom they went to the place of the dead hades he said uh -uh. they went to certain places do you know how many people travel in and out of this earth realm to come back with innovations and come back with things that create waves? And many believers are just laughing. Say one more time, give me this mountain. Caleb said, we went and spied it. And I knew I was able to take it. There were giants there. Somebody brought them there. Is that true? Brought them there. Let me tell you something. You will find these spirits in the labor market. Hear me. You will find these spirits in family life. You want to get married. You will find it on your job. When you enter and get the job, it's only one thing. You will find it again. There are people who have been in a place. They got the job. But they are in that position for donkey years. And you find out that these are the people who truly love God. Because the devil knows that every time they rise, they will create space for the agenda of God to find expression. Is that true? This is what the devil is afraid of. He's afraid of agents. Everybody say agents. Because when you rise in this mountain, God can find expression through a mortal vessel to save sinners. Are you listening to me? To fund the advancement of God's kingdom. Imagine that you have a company, you are a CEO of a company. You can legislate. 7 o'clock there is devotion. 7 to 7.30. Are you willing? No. Have a nice day. Are you listening to me? This is not the issue of being good or bad. This is the value. You place it. You say, why are you too spiritual? I say, that's exactly why we are successful. That is exactly why we are successful. Hmm. Wealthy people have little places in their offices. One place where nobody enters. They are the only ones. Is that true? As beautiful as their offices are, they must find some certain places. And once there is time, they don't care what kind of business deal. They say, Mr. Man, you are here because of what I'm doing. If I stop doing it, you won't come again. Excuse me. And you see many people just standing for hours. The man is not coming out. Later he says, I'm ready to see you. And they don't know what it is that happens. I bring to you the spiritual dimension of life life is more spiritual and that's why our theme for this year our year of supernatural exploits daniel eleven thirty two, 32 it says they that know their god so everybody knows their god everybody knows their god that's the secret of exploit he said they that know their god they shall be and they shall do exploits let me tell you you don't gather every week in koinonia just by magic or mistake if you think it's a mistake open a ministry just open it in front of social center where you are sure you will see people and find out whether somebody will come life is spiritual are you listening to me that's why every department in koinonia whether you are snapping or you are cleaning flour you take it spiritually is that true Many of you have kicked away the spiritual dimension of life, calling it fanatism. You have allowed secular humanism to bring you to a point where you feel when you apply these principles, you apply the law of attraction, it will just work. You apply... <laughs> Look, let me tell you the truth. Brothers and sisters, many have tried it before you. Learn from them. Don't learn from yourself. Learn from them. I saw my father go through things I could not understand. I've said this thing again and again. I saw my mother go through things. My sister had been looking for a job for years. 
I taught her this principle and prayed with her. It wasn't up to two weeks. They called her in Benway State that she has a job. I said, that's right. Give me this mountain. Now, devil of darkness. Give me this mountain. This is what some of you need to do for your loved ones. You have been handling the issue psychologically. You have been saying, see, you see, well, if not because of this, your third class. Ah, God would have helped you. You said people are doing something. You read fishery. Why didn't you at least try and add it with something? Yet you are hearing that a woman slept with a man that has never seen the four walls of a university and they carried her and made her the secretary. She's the one who is interviewing you. Does it not let you see that life is spiritual? See, those who are waiting for God to do something, stop wasting your time. If you don't take charge of your life and destiny, you may sit down there forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Take this message to your loved ones especially those in the labor market you want to get married things are not working anytime things go wrong get to the realm of the spirit and find out first you lose a lot of things see if you go to the realm of the spirit and you find out that things are in check then come back and find out the principles of life that are to make things work but first consult with the realm of the spirit this is the mistake with a lot of people the realm of the spirit is the last bus stop a particular woman wanted to see me. She said, Kai, they have problems. I say, ah, this guy is young. I say, see what this woman is saying. If I am a consultant gynecologist and you have problem, and I say, I want to give you injection, will you say, ah, you are young or you turn, let me give you the injection. This is what, this is the problem people have. Highest praise to the king. Highest praise to the king. That devil over your destiny is a liar. You will break forth. You will break forth on every side. You will break forth. He said, they that know their God, they shall be strong. Say, I know my God. Say it, I know my God. I am strong and I will do exploits. Say, I know my God. I can take this mountain. Yes, I can take this mountain. Who told you you cannot do clean business until you compromise? Who told you you cannot get a job until you sleep with another man? That is the language of Baal. I like you to, uh, to see, step into life with an understanding. Say, Satan, you can fool people, but I spent my fruitful years building. I'm not just stepping into the labor market just like a graduate. I'm stepping as an ambassador. I have a character on myself. I have a kingdom that I'm representing. Therefore, open up unto me. Give me this mountain. I tell you that mountain will open. I'll show you a secret tonight. In this mountain. I show you a secret. I show you a secret. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Don't sit back there wondering why things are not moving. You must contend in power. When Daniel was about to legislate, hear me. Hear me, listen. Daniel was about to legislate. He said, and I, Daniel, understood by books. The moment Daniel found out that it had been written, the captivity of the nation of Israel from Babylon, he went to prayer. He was consulting spiritually and things were happening. He did not go, listen, listen. He, he never went to Nebuchadnezzar or Darius palace because that's not where things happen. He went to a secret place. When he began to pray, he was praying there, but from the palace, those spiritual entities were saying, who is forcing this gate to open? And they began to move in human vessels. And they said, oh king, listen, what is it about prayer that will make people beg a king to set a law you now understand why they are kicking the Ten Commandments. You now understand why they are doing a lot of things. They want to cause every, to close every door. So that any man that will come. Can I tell you something? The agenda of Satan is that a time will come in this country. Even to get 10,000 naira, you must bow to bear. I tell you the truth. It's happening. It's just that some of you are still depending on your parents. That's why you have not seen it in its full gravity. A time will come even to collect salary. 
you will bow but where are those uncompromising people the seven thousand under the custody of obediah who will not bow to bell we know our god we have been strengthened he has done mighty things in the past we will pay the price shout it give me this mountain shout it one more time give me this mountain lift your voice and begin to pray i will take the mountain of family i will take the mountain of the economy come on now you know where god is sending you to lift your voice and pray things don't just happen things don't just happen life is spiritual life is governed spiritually wake up wake up wake up wake up your success is tied to your spirituality your success is tied to your spirituality they that know their god only god can make principles work they will not work independent of god every successful man has bowed to somebody somewhere i tell you the truth every money every money is blood money whether from the blood of human beings and demons or the blood of jesus christ every success is spiritual give me this mountain i will conquer i will conquer i take this mountain i take this mountain without compromising i take the mountain i wore a good warfare with the prophecy i wore a good warfare i paid the price hallelujah listen listen if god has called you into the ministry of worship that's the mountain that is waiting for you you're going into the media there is a mountain you're going into business and finance finance concerns everybody you had it from the documentary let me tell you something i want you to pray now and say lord i'm not confused about my allegiance i declare to you right now money will not change me marriage will not change me lift your voice i declare my allegiance i'm not just a social being i'm a spiritual being marriage will be an opportunity for you to find expression well to be an opportunity to fund the activity of the kingdom come on pray the Lord bless me I will advance the kingdom I will build ministries for you I will fund the agenda of the kingdom there's no pretending there's no hiding if you declare your allegiance you will enter into this serious but undeniable success hear me hear me let me bring a word of comfort for some of us there are many of us hear me you have refused to compromise some of us that's why you are paying the price rejoice because your salvation draw it nigh are you hearing me rejoice refuse to compromise you make heaven proud when you stand the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small 
but those who know their God are strong people. Hallelujah. Hear me. Other people are building their shops with blood money and demonic things. But you come in the dignity of kingdom integrity. It will cost you. You will suffer. But you hold on. Let your redeemer show up. See, let me tell you something. Hear me. Malachi chapter 4 prophesied about the recession. He said a time will come. The earth will burn like oven. And all those who do it wickedly. Can I tell you something? This thing you hear people announce about wealth transfer is not some human imagination. It will happen. But you must declare your fraternity. This is the greatest secret I know of success. Success is spiritual. I bring you a message of hope. Your certificate will only make meaning when your allegiance has been declared. So the one you are ali the one you are standing by will back you. He must you must have a godfather. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray. All the mountains that you desire to open up to you, hear me? Listen. You are going to say I come in the name of the Lord. This is what happened when David was going to confront Goliath. He said, you come to me with your bow and spheres. He said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. When it was time for Elijah to destroy the prophets of Baal, he said, make 12 stones. He reminded God, make 12 stones. Regarding the 12 tribes of Israel, God's covenant nation. And he said, pour water. If God does not respect me, he will respect what is on the altar. Can I tell you something? Don't let anybody fool you. Life is spiritual. Right now, lift up your voice and begin to speak to the mountains you desire to open up to you. Come on now. They will share you. Mountain of family. Be open. Come on, Mountain of finance. Be open. Mountain of media. Be open. I confront you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. I confront you in the name of the captain of the horse of Israel. In the name of Jesus, be open for the people of God. Nigerian labor market, be open. Be open. Be open for the people of God. Doors of marriage, be open for the people of God. We take this mountain. We take this mountain. Listen, listen, listen. I have taught you a powerful secret. Keep it forever. You will produce mysterious success that no one will understand. See, see, this is what, hold on, this is what makes people criticize some of us because they cannot see where the addition is done. We don't come in the open to add one plus two plus three. Everything is established in a secret. And when people see the result, because it does not add up, people begin to criticize. You come for miracle service. You see people packed inside, outside, sitting on the fence. Where's the publicity material? Where did they get publicity from? I'm teaching you a mystery. Life is spiritual. Hallelujah. 
Alléluia. Alléluia. There are people praying thousands and thousands to be on air. I was sitting down praying when CBN came and said they wanted to make a documentary on me. I've been in over maybe 70 channels around. I've not paid a cover for it. Look, when you settle things spiritually, no matter how long, you can start rejoicing even when anybody has not seen anything because you know, you know the powerhouse. You know where things are done. Hear me. Let me advise you. You want to apply for a job. Don't just hear about an opportunity and carry your CV. Uh-uh. Kings don't rule like that. You know what to do. Carry your CV and lock yourself. Keto Pariata. Confront those mountains. Say, give me this mountain. They will call you. See, hear me. You've been praying. A husband has not come. A wife has not come. The first thing is find out what principles that have been put in the written word that you are violating. Once you get those things straight, go and lock yourself. The Bible tells us lock yourself and stay there and generate energy in the spirit. Can I tell you something? No matter how long it takes, light and darkness cannot stand. See, and when your victory comes, it is sustained because you know how it came. It's not trial and error. Amen. Hallelujah. Pair yourselves into two, five minutes and we'll be done. You are going to pray for your neighbor. Neighbor, don't hold anybody who is not serious in this very critical moment of prayer. Listen. The Bible says, and if two of you shall agree, as touching anything if two hallelujah hallelujah now ask your neighbor in one minute what mountain is trusting God to bow just ask him and let him whisper to you because and you don't keep quiet if it's marriage say marriage if it's business say business are you ready to pray now are you ready to pray now? In the next two minutes, I'd like you to pray like a warrior. Pray like a warrior. I agree with you. And we come in the name of the Lord God of Israel. Let genotypes be changed. SS to AA. Let mountains of delay give way. Jobs be open. Marriages be open. Business connections be open. 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 In the name of Jesus, admission be open. Why results be open? Why institutions be open? The labor market be open. We open you up. We confront powers. We confront powers. We challenge you in the name of the Lord through the greatness of the power of the Holy Ghost. You will bow. You will bow. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. 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 For many of you whose prayer life is down, you will be cheated in life. James 5.13. Don't open there. We're out of time. James 5.13. 
if you can give it to us from the Amplified. It says, is any of you afflicted? What is the remedy? Let him pray. It didn't say let him sing praise and worship. Or let him go ahead running. Is any of you afflicted, ill-treated, or suffering evil? What is the remedy? He should say one more time. He should hear me. Listen. This is the biblical key to break through out of any situation. It's in the Bible. Listen. Job. In all of Job's affliction, he didn't pray. Are you hearing me? He discussed with wise men. He spoke with elders, but he did not pray. Give me Job 42 verse 10. The Bible says, And God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed. Not when he discussed. Many of you are talkatives. You run from pillar to post, telling everybody your problem who cannot help. So are you hearing me? He says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job and restored his fortunes when he prayed. When he Jonah in all of those boys terror tongue, Jonah didn't pray until he entered the belly of the fish. He started praying and the fish brought him out. I bring you a solution. Anything that has challenged you, take time to pray with understanding and revelation. The world that will stop you is not yet there. A sickness is afflicting you. Pray. Generate energy in the spirit. Many of us have not prayed for our lives. You've not prayed for the issue of life partner. You think it's a sign of desperation. Whereas it's because the devil knows that warriors are coming out of your children and will shake nations. It was because of Jesus Christ thousands of other children were killed. The devil can wipe a nation. The devil can throw the economy of a nation down because of one person. May you be that one person that will threaten hell Hallelujah. Let me agree with you and pray with you. You will come back with testimonies. See, testimonies are not magic. Testimonies are a product of the open heavens that happens when demonic entities are displaced. Are you hearing me? Testimonies are not magic. It's not an issue of trial or error. When the resistance stopping you gives way, you must have a testimony and the prince of Persia stopped the prayers of Daniel the answer until Gabriel was sent meanwhile Daniel was still praying if he had stopped it would look like God did answer his prayer but he continued praying he didn't know many of you hear me you've been praying for three months four months you are about to stop you don't know what has been happening in the heavens for your sake Gabriel said, and I was withstood one and twenty days. He said, until Michael came. And he said, I am come now to give you understanding. Pray until there is a manifestation. Satan can give up. Satan can give up. See, you are not trying to fight Satan. You are enforcing that which has been finished. Are you seeing? So, don't come in wondering will i win with no no christ has established it your job is to enforce it in your life let me pray for you father in the name of jesus i pray for your people every door that has refused to answer to you under this anointing tonight in the name that is above every other name i command it to be open now in the name of jesus Doors of marriage be open. Any barren woman in this place, I command you to be a joyful mother of children. Any important man in this place, I command you to be a father of many children. Anyone trusting God for a job, we are agreeing here that the testimonies will start hearing from now till october 
miracle jobs undeniable inexplainable my god confirm it from now till october fearful stable jobs those of you trusting god for capital to start business capital comes by favor period when it comes by favor you build with wisdom capital doesn't come by running around and begging i pray that that favor will come to you may you receive that favor anyone who is responsible for being a destiny helper in your life i pray right now receive their ministry in the name of jesus see let me announce to you any one of you trusting god for marriage i'm saying it again if god be god i declare that before this year runs out there will be supernatural inexplainable but undeniable marriages any affliction that is stopping anyone here under the sound of my voice whether hiv whether cancer i don't care what it is i command you to leave right now i change ss genotype become aa now in the name of jesus hallelujah everything that has affected your prayer lives i command that dry pole whatever affects your prayer life is killing you i command let your prayer altar come strong in the name of jesus whatever makes you to doubt the word of god you believe god here yeah, but once you go out you doubt i command may your faith be rooted in the name of jesus Your hands will command favor. You will go and do exploits. You will go and do exploits. Every hand against your destiny, I pull it down. Hear me? Any enchantment and any divination, any activity of witches and wizards and necromancers, I stand under this apostolic unction. And in the name that is above all names, I command your plans to be nullified in the name of Jesus. Wherever you come from in this country, north, east, south, or west, I confront the powers of darkness. Let God's people go. Let God's people go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe with all my heart that in this eight month we are stepping into a level of exploit we have seen certain things that god has done hallelujah hallelujah i announced to us at the beginning of the year some of the things that the lord showed me i don't stand here to speak until god has spoken to me i have no business talking about anything god has not told me i want you to mark it mark it write it this month will command levels of financial exploits. It, it will literally bring fear. The Bible says you shall see it and you shall fear and your heart shall be enlarged. Hmm. For they got not into the land by their own swords. Neither did their arms save them. Because you have had a favor unto them. Watch out for the things that God is going to be doing. I love announcing things before they happen. Because when they happen, you will know that it is the mouth of the Lord. Before God makes a statement, he will gauge himself. And see whether he can bring it to pass. Then he will speak. Believe it for your loved ones. Believe it. I've already announced it to my mother. I told her, mother... This is what the Lord has said. I want you to connect and I want you to believe it. Believe it. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her, I tell you, you will see, you will see a financial galore.
things will happen that will surprise people the lord has shown me this i've seen it in the spirit the bible says that which i tell you in the secret place declare thou on the mountain tops for when the powers are dethroned you must have a testimony father we give you thanks hallelujah you're here you've never made a decision for jesus christ listen to me we're talking about taking mountains it is those who belong to the lord that can make this great exploit of faith and i want to give you an opportunity right now inside and outside you've never made a sincere decision you know that your life you, you cannot play games with your life hallelujah whether you've given your heart to the lord but you found yourself derailing now is an opportunity and Jesus Christ is calling you. Hallelujah. You can make it right. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Whoever is making that decision, whether for the first time or renewing your commitment to get serious with the Lord, please leave your seat and come out here quickly. 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 If we have anyone like that, make sure you don't sit back. As the Lord is talking to you inside and outside. Inside and outside. Make sure you are making sincere commitments. God bless you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. God bless you. They are coming. Appreciate them. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you don't sit back. Now is the day of salvation. You have heard the word of the Lord. Yes, we give you praise. Yes, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Lift up your hands very quickly and I'll pray with you. I'd like you to repeat after me. Say it with understanding. Mean it from your heart. Say, dear Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart today I make a decision to stand for you I declare that I live for you forever forward ever backward never I denounce sin and Satan I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life from today I receive eternal life into my spirit and I live a victorious Christian life. I'm an effective Christian. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you in Jesus name. Father thank you. You brought these ones by yourself. I pray that you preserve them. In the name of Jesus. No going back. You will change absolutely. Your value system will change. And you will begin to pursue the things of God. I bless you with a deep hunger for the things of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for making this great decision. Please follow the ushers. They will have your details. We will contact you. We will have a meeting with you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Just follow them. Tomorrow by 6 o'clock at chapel. We will have a meeting with you. Hallelujah. Very quickly tonight is your first time of worshiping with us. This is Koinonia. We love you and we celebrate you. Please appreciate them as they come. This is your first time. Please jump up quickly and come to the front. We have a prayer and a blessing for you. Can you do that quickly? Appreciate them. We celebrate you. Koinonia. Bless them. Bless them. Thank you. Thank you for coming. There are people coming all the way from Joss. Emmanuel, you're welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. God brought you to bless you. He brought you to increase you. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. Meeting put together by Eternity Network International. Hallelujah. Were you blessed tonight? You will never be the same. Something will happen in your life. You will know you met God tonight. Hallelujah. We are here every Friday. And God is building an army. God is preparing us with understanding. Hallelujah. I pray that you will keep going from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands as we pray for them. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Bless them bless them when we bless you you are blessed we are anointed we are ambassadors representing the parliament of heaven when we bless you no devil can reverse that course because he's given us authority thank you lord jesus you are blessed you are blessed whatever ailment you came here with leaves you you will go back with a tangible testimony that you met the lord jesus christ a testimony so compelling that you will not come alone the next time Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. The Lord increase you. Please just walk down and you have the ushers. They will have your details. 
and we'll get back to you in Jesus' name. Please appreciate them. Thank you. Let's take the following announcements quickly. Hallelujah. Please listen. Let's take the following announcements. I want to first and foremost appreciate everyone for making it today. Please celebrate yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. There is a spiritual curriculum that we are following. And God is granting us grace. We are catching up and making progress. It will make you a sign and a wonder. Please, if you do not have this, these are our evangelism and publicity materials. They are free. You can get them from the ushers. Just give somebody and the Lord will bless them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please take note of our official lines for the media and the protocol. Hallelujah. These lines are supposed to help us. The house is increasing. We have a lot more activities and we need some level of coordination. So please and please, as much as possible, um, communicate these lines, especially for those who are bringing invitations for ministration. Please give them these lines. And then I want to bring to your notice that all our teachings are free. Praise the Lord. Please. I'm saying it now because I know that the media has been complaining. And then, please let me announce, I don't have a Facebook page. Praise God. Praise God. Please. I, 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 you will not do it. I know that you are kingdom people. But please and please, nobody should open any Facebook page in my name or Twitter account and then people do funny things they beg people for money online and do all kinds of things they try to use the credibility of people please and please hallelujah our official Facebook page is Koinonia you can can you project it our official Facebook and Twitter pages please this is for security reasons and then listen we will never ask you to give money or anything on Facebook. You should know us, man. We don't do those kinds of things. Hallelujah. If there is a need for anything, we communicate it here. And if there is a need to give people an opportunity to be blessed, there are ways that we do it. Our official Facebook page. So please don't have anybody calling you in my name or doing any kind of thing for anything for ministry. The second thing I want to say is um, it has come to I noticed that there are a few people who uh, sad to say, just use my name for the publicity of their programs. Hallelujah. And sometimes you can see ministrations and see my name, even my picture, and I'm not aware I'm not coming. Or sometimes the people can, can discuss with the protocol, but maybe it's a ministration that I may not be able to make it. The people who still, after communicating, they will still put my name and put everything. Then when the crowd comes, they'll say, well, just to let you know that Joshua Selman is not around, but God is in this place. You know, and all of that. Don't do that. Praise God. I'm not an idol. These are the things that cause great men to fall. Hallelujah. Please. So, this, these are our official Facebook um, pages. Please click like. If you are not part of us, click like and ask all your friends and loved ones to be part of it. You can receive posts and you can follow us online. Hallelujah. And then I know that the media has been working on YouTube too. I don't know how far they've gone there, but they want to just take some extracts of the messages to put on YouTube for the viewing uh, pleasure. Okay, so that's it, our YouTube channel. Praise God. Appreciate the media. They're improving. And God is doing great things. Hallelujah. This is not just an advancement in ministry. This is to give people an opportunity. Hallelujah. And then let me say something again. I know that there are a few people. There are, I know three radio stations that play our messages free of charge. We appreciate it. Honestly, we do. May the Lord bless you. But just to encourage you, please, um, it's always good to let the protocol department know. The protocol department is here to help us organize everything around our lives. So we appreciate it. Uh, if you want to play maybe for your church, I know that there are churches and youth fellowships that use the messages for their retreat. We thank God for that. But when it comes to maybe going on air, whether videos or this, I beg you, please, for the sake of order, please, the protocol department is here. Contact them. Contact them. We're not going to charge you. This is not about money is just to be able to bring organization.
Hallelujah. Does this make sense? Do you understand? You know the kind of society we are living in. And it's good that we watch these things from the onset before we start. So take note of all these announcements. And then our official counseling days are Mondays. Please, we don't counsel every day again. Hallelujah. Most times I'm traveling or having ministrations and we cannot do that. And you see that a number of the ministers are not around. Everybody is busy. There are lots of things that we are doing. So the luxury of time is not there. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.